sure uh, most of you were chasing targets March 31st. It would have been a very different experience chasing targets virtually and celebrating your achievement of targets uh, uh, virtually with your team. Uh, quite a novel experience. Uh, and that is where I think uh, we need to look at where is the economic impact and what is the new normal. Obviously, the planning for your 2021 uh, next year planning has all gone for a toss. Whatever plans you would have had, uh, whatever thoughts that you would have had, the last 45 days, everything has changed, right? Well, are we looking at the downturn? Most definitely, yes. We are looking at a slowdown. Is there going to be an, a recession? I still don't know. Uh, nobody knows. In fact, nobody can take a guess where things would be two weeks from now, four weeks from now. But what we can do is all of us can prepare ourselves for how we can run a business in a much better fashion. I can assure you the last economic downturn, and today I will refer a lot to the economic downturn of 2008. I'm sure some of you would have seen that. And the reason why I'm trying to uh, talk about the economic downturn of 2008 is just to prepare you as to what is going to come going forward with this healthcare uh, impact that has hit the world. The last similar impact actually on account of healthcare uh, issues came in 1980, exactly 100 years ago, around 100 years ago. And this impact has come in so quickly as against the global financial crisis of 2008 that it has led people gasping for breath, businesses gasping for breath. So what do we do? Uh, and before uh, I get ahead, what I'm going to do is share my screen so that uh, all of you can see the slides and then we'll take it up from there. I hope all of you can see my screen. Uh, yes, sir, we can see you. Great. So, uh, This is a quick slide. Uh, just wanted to give you a sense of uh, this is WHO data uh, yesterday, yesterday's data. Uh, yesterday's data mentioned by WHO, the report said 823,000 positive cases. In India, uh, just morning, I think we crossed 2,000. Bloomberg just three hours ago reported a number of 932. 2000, very close to a million. When it started off, uh, I would say just uh, 45 days back, who would have thought that there would be a million cases across the world? Of course, the epicenter started in China, moved very quickly to Europe, and right now, US is battling, uh, is facing its biggest healthcare challenge, uh, probably from the time the country was. Uh, was really formed. So uh, quite a challenge. But anyway, let's look at uh, uh, what we're going to do uh, and what I would think you should be doing uh, to keep your business ahead. What's important is not to look behind, but what's important is what do you need to do now and what to take it forward. Quick sense, entrepreneurship is about making ideas happen. So it's not just about the idea, but also the execution. And today, we are all going to look at what are the possible execution ideas that you could have in this pandemic. Uh, just as a quick one, uh, during the presentation, if you have questions, 
keep typing them in the question box. Uh, Sonali, our moderator, and I, uh, we will go over the questions once my conversation is over, and I will attempt to answer as many as I can, given the time schedule that we have. So if you, in the question box, if you see a similar question already asked, uh, you can probably just write plus one or something like that so that we know uh, you don't need to repeat that question. Uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and look at what are the 11 steps that I believe you should be taking. The fact that you have to communicate is a given. You know, uh, in times of crisis, whatever be a threshold for communication, cross that. Which means if you think the more communication, the more communication that you can do, the better it is. What kind of communication you need to do? Well, it has to be clear, crisp, transparent, and open. Believe me, in times of crisis, in times of situations like these, you really need to, really, really need to have a very transparent and open communication. Uh, more importantly, your team, you need to connect with your team and explain to them where the business is, what are you trying to do with the business, how are you going to take it forward, what are your plans. Many times, uh, as business owners, entrepreneurs, we do not share all the information we probably shared 50% or 75% of the information that we have, believing that that should be enough for, uh, for our employees. It doesn't work like that, friends. Uh, employees as human beings are very sensitive and especially in these times, uh, they are hypersensitive. And by not you not sharing the entire information, you're actually getting them more fearful, uh, they would try and start rumors within the organization. Keep away from that. Try and be crisp, clear, transparent, and open where the business is. With your customers, and I'm sure, uh, uh, just as a, uh, as a thought, most of you or some of you would be members of frequent flyer uh, programs, would be members of various hospitality programs of different hotels. And you would have noticed that you would have been seeing in the last 30 days a barrage of emails coming from these uh, aviation CEOs writing to them, telling them till the time, of course, the lockdown did not happen. These CEOs were writing to you, what are they doing? to ensure that the planes are safe, that how they're sanitizing the planes, how are they ensuring that the journey that you're taking with, their, with them is safe. The hotels were writing to you how they're sanitizing their rooms on a daily basis to ensure that when you're within their premises, you are safe. So these organizations were already writing to you as because you were their customers. Likewise, you need to write to your customers, what are you going to do? What are your plans? What are your thoughts? Uh, connect with them and believe me, they will appreciate that connection. Look at your social networks, your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Instagrams, whatever handles that you run, you need to have a similar message getting across to the larger community at a large. And why it is required is because the moment these people connect with you on social networks, they need to understand where your business is, what you're trying to do, keep your business up. Suppliers, just like your customers, your suppliers are equally important. Your connection with them and your communication with them has to be clear. Uh, and why it is required is to ensure that your supply chains are working. Our suppliers are with you. And lastly, your stakeholders. 
think of it as the stakeholders of your business need to understand what are your business continues to run in these times what are you going to do differently and how you're going to do it differently so having said that uh, the next step that i'd like to talk about is positive uh, interestingly in every crisis is hidden an opportunity if you take look back to the financial crisis of 2008 we saw some companies thrive right after it was because that these companies saw the opportunities and they took it with both their hands and ran they ran with the ball uh, just as a good example uh, you look at netflix uh, in 2008 and 9 what was ruling in the us markets was a DVD rental chain called Blockbuster Video. Customers used to come, bring a, a take a come to those stores physically, rent out a DVD, take it back, watch the DVD after a week, come back, give the DVD, pay the rental, and stuff like that. Closer home, that is what you were doing. You had a close by DVD rental company that you were going to either you were going physically or somebody from that rental company was coming and delivering the DVD to you for 24 hours or 36 hours, 48 hours, whatever you wanted. What has Netflix done? It actually killed Blockbuster Video because they saw the opportunity. You look at Amazon. Amazon since 2008 global financial crisis has continued to survive and thrive. Uh, interestingly, uh, the global financial crisis saw a lot of banks go down, but there was one bank that stood the test of time and actually came out tops. And they, that global bank was Citibank. In the US, it actually increased significantly in terms of the assets that they were holding. So really, you have to look at what are the opportunities that exist in front of you. Remember, panic, small wins every hour and celebrate that with your teams and do it with passion and enthusiasm that you have for your business remember when i say being positive it is not for the sake of being positive the positivity comes because you are seeing yourself as at the end of the tunnel mr entrepreneur you are seeing that there is How would you like to, uh, how would I want you to do is look for new opportunities. First, look at opportunities that look at new products, look at new customers, look at new markets. If your target audience is impacted, for example, if you're supplying to the hospitality industry, to the uh, aviation industry, you, you will need to look at new, new target audience because you know today that the hospitality and the aviation industry will take some time to come out of this crisis, right? So you will have to reinvent your products, your services, possibly look at new customers. Help those customers that are in need. And many times, which it may need to, looking at products at the lower price options. So try and create products at lower price options because that is what your customers actually need today. Present an alternative. In recession, people really make hard choices and they look at what they need to cut from their lives. You have to ensure that it is not your product and services that they cut, which means you have to look at possibly cost efficient ways to offering your products and services to your target audience. 
survive for sure, and maybe even thrive. So your teams need to see that you're leading the people with positive. You cannot, cannot present a desperate picture, especially in front of your teams. even in this pandemic and ensuring that your business continues to go forward. The next thing that you need to do, change. Believe me, uh, there's a quote that most of you would have seen in your lives. The only constant in life is change. If you do not Procrastination will not help you. If you wait, thinking, okay, I'll wait and do something once the lockdown opens, if it opens on April 14th. Or I'll wait for April 14th to come, it's locked down, I don't need really, really need to do anything. And uh, once the lockdown opens, you yourself believe that, oh, in the next couple of weeks, things will be, uh, business as normal, friends, it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. You have to move now. Do your scenario planning now. Because if you do not do your scenario planning and move forward, by the time the next change comes, you will be far behind. Businesses typically have two or three kinds of responses, actually three three kinds of responses for any slowdown. And I'll again take you back. Uh, today I'm going to sort of uh, focus a lot on the global financial crisis 2008 because that is where probably some of you saw the slowdown. And you need to see where you want to, where this slowdown will take you. So businesses typically have three or four kinds of responses in a slowdown. The first, which is the most natural response that comes, is cost cutting. So these, this is called prevention focus. Most companies in a slowdown believe, let's cut our costs, and once we've cut our costs, let us see whether we're still profitable. And I'll give you an interesting story of a large company that I'm sure all of you know of, which was Sony. In 2008, Sony was being led by a gentleman called Harvard Stringer. Harvard was uh, a war veteran, Vietnam War veteran, of course, uh, large experience in uh, CBS and broadcast industry. And of course, he finally reached uh, the level of leading Sony worldwide. Uh, 2008, because I think his training as war veteran was to cut your losses, uh, he decided to cut expenses primarily. Sony let go of employees, they cut R&D expenditure and everything else that they needed to do to cut down their costs. When things started going up, guess what happened? Sony actually found very difficult to regain the sales momentum and lost out on its competition big time. The other companies, so this is prevention focus. There are other who I believe are the aggressive, what is called promotion focused companies. And again, a great example, large company that you know of, is Hewlett Packard, HP for short. HP had in 2002 taken over the business from of Compaq and their sole objective was that they wanted to be the leader in the laptop market. Guess what? 2002, they had taken over Compaq. They were trying to put their businesses together. And then came the slowdown of 2008. HP at that point of time decided that this was a good time to acquire some more new businesses. 
So they went and acquired EDS, they went and acquired Palm, they went and acquired 3Com. And in the end, they realized that they had bitten far more than they could chew. And they lost out the laptop race to two other competitions, Dell and Lenovo. So you have to think how you're going to plan. Another approach that companies take, which people have found to be the best approach, is what is called a pragmatic approach, where companies have a mix of offensive and defensive strategies. And what that really does is the defensive strategies take care of the shock of the slowdown and the offensive strategies that really get you ahead is what you're trying to fix now. So very interestingly, and uh, again, uh, I'll talk about two large companies that were battling it out in the US for the stationary market. So the two companies was, were Office Depot on one side and Staples on the other. What did Office Depot do? All, both these companies had a whole bunch of number of stores across US. Office Depot looked at the loss-making uh, loss stores, shut them down, and tried to contract their costs. What did Staples do? Staples, on the other hand, cut down some of their loss-making stores, but they added, as an offensive strategy, 10% to their staff. And what was that staff supposed to do? From their stores, Staples started offering value-added services, and this staff was primarily geared up to offer those value-added services. Three years down the road, post the slowdown in 2012, Staples was far ahead of its rival Office Depot. So think about, and I'm just giving you these ideas so that when you look back at your business, you think of what are offensive and defensive strategies that you can take. So what are you trying to do in change? You have to get ahead. You, as the leader of the organization, have to lead that change. Nobody else is going to come and do it for you. The message has to come from you. These are the changes that we are going to do. Look at, take a hard look at your products, your services, your pricing, delivery, staffing. Take a look at every aspect of your business. If required, change the entire, change the whole business. If required, pivot the business 90 degrees. Look at what different you can do. The reason why I'm saying so is things are in hard times, you have to look at and constantly be nimble on your feet to look at Change the way you deliver your products, especially in lockdown modes. Change the way you offer your products to your customers. If you're not selling online, this is the time to go online now. Probably end of this conversation, you just get and start looking at how your products and services can be offered online. Get on with it right now. <laughs> The next step that you need to take, and believe me, uh, the last eight days would have taught you that virtual is the new normal. There is, and believe me, it's not going anywhere now. You look at, if you think that as soon as the lockdown opens, we will be in a position to go and start knocking at customers' doors and suppliers' doors, uh, shaking hands with friends. Believe me, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And that is the new normal. Look at what schools and colleges have done. Those of you who have school-going children, college-going children, what have these institutions done so quickly? They have gone online. 
the e-learning platforms never had it better. Right? So while you're working at home from your house, your children are online in front of their laptops, uh, you know, on, connected to their school, getting being being taught by their teachers. So look at the shift that has happened and think why will this not continue? Right? Look at uh, what Baiju has done, closer home, full page ads telling you, you know, this class three to four students can log in at this time, class eight to nine students can log in at this time, this is the subject being taught and stuff like that. Or look at what uh, your local gyms have done, right? Gyms actually were the first to be shut down uh, under the new lockdown norms, uh, even before the lockdown was announced. And what did these gy gyms do? Most of them with their trainers connected with you online so that in the safety of your home, you can continue to exercise and remain fit. So these companies have quickly adapted to the new normal, which is virtual. Technology is a pro here and a constraint here. Most of us still do not have the discipline what technology is all about. There are technology challenges. You know, probably earlier, the only bandwidth issues that you would be facing is towards the evening when everybody was normally at home. But right now, uh, probably in a room at four different corners, you have four people of the family connected doing their piece of work, either uh, being uh, either connected to the school college or connected to their office. So bandwidth issues come into play. Finding a quiet corner in the house so that you can conduct your uh, business also at times becomes a challenge, right? So those are things that you need to think through and see how you're going to fix it for the future. Managing your team virtually, yes. That is one of the biggest challenges that all of us have. Depending on the maturity of your staff, there are many ways that you can handle it. But the easiest way is to start with the morning huddle, fixed time huddle. Be the platform that you're using, uh, be it Zoom that we are all using today, be it Microsoft Teams, Slack, Skype, whatever platform that you, you're adopting. But it is great to have a fixed time huddle with your team. What does, that do, what does that do for you and your team members? It gets them to focus what is their ask for the day. Not only that, everybody gets connected. Everybody knows where everybody is. If your team is slightly immature, a midday fixed time call right after lunch or right before lunch is a good idea. At that point of time, as the leader of the organization, you can address uh, any problem, uh, problems, offer them solutions so that they get the next half day to quickly work on those and take uh, next uh, steps forward. And then again, towards the end of the day, uh, catch up, quick catch up, in a huddle as to what you achieve for the day likely plans for next day and stuff like that. Social distancing, needless to say, is the new norm. And again, remember, uh, once the lockdown opens, people would rather have joy rather than the fear of this stuff. So remember, uh, things are not going to quickly come out of it. Uh, we, as human beings, the fear that we have from the virus it's not going to come out and let us uh, quickly start mingling with people. 
the employees start feeling alone you know, when they're working from home. And that is where the, the daily hurdles, the end of the day uh, connects, really keeps them rooted and gets them what they need to start and what they need to work at on a day-to-day -day basis. That's something that is crucial, crucial for your business. Planning. So putting your weekly plans in place, what are you going to do while you're working from home? What are you trying to achieve at the end of the week? Stuff like that is important, just as meetings are. And when you're meetings, when you're running your meetings, not only just as morning hurdles or you know, objective specific meetings, ensure that you have 100% participation. Everybody who comes to the meeting participates. That is where you get people to focus on the job at hand. And finally, ensure that there's a program for reporting for each employee. What has he or she accomplished through the week, through the day? So that is crucially important. So all these aspects that I talked about were more uh, relating to what are you going to do? Now let's move on to what is required for your business. Um, sir, I'm really sorry for cutting you off. Uh, can we take a very short break? Uh, your voice seems to be uh, fading in between. So we can uh, check that in between. And sure. to all the attendees, we, uh, you can have this five minute break to write down all the questions uh, in the Q&A se uh, session for uh, the questions to be answered at the end of the session. Yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank we you will so take much. five minutes break. Uh, it's 12.35, 12.40, we are back.
Uh, welcome back, sir. Thank you. Yeah, please continue. So folks, let's uh, carry on. I hope uh, the voice is better and you can uh, hear me much more cl uh, clearly now. Mm, yes, sir. Okay, great. So, uh, sorry, I'll switch back to my, wait a minute. Yeah, can you see all, can all of you see my screen? Uh, not as of now. Okay. Wait a minute. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, it's visible now. Sorry. So quickly, uh, now we are focusing and the next couple of steps that we will talk about is what is it that you can do to get your business ahead. First thing that you need to look at, look at Remember, in times of crisis, cash is king. So, I'm not saying stop spending, but look at what you can slow down and what you can postpone. So, take a real hard look at your expenses and look what you can stop spending right away. So, a good example. You're working out of co-working spaces. What you need to do? Quickly invoke the force majeure right now. And then when you go back, once the lockdown is open, take a quick assess, assess how many of your staff are going to come back to the co-working space or some of them are continuing to work from home. Go back and renegotiate those rentals. Those are things that you need to do now. Look at slowing down, postponing your expenses. Work around every expense. Look at the 8020 rule. Look at what your major spend expenses are and see how you can cut them. Another good example. If you're looking at upgrading your IT systems, upgrading your uh, servers, this is the time to take a hard look. Can you postpone it by three months, six months and see where you could end up? Things like that, those are the things that you really need to take a hard look at. Where you can reduce outlays. If you have a CAPEX pro, uh, capital oriented project going, see what you can delay there. Because you need to conserve all the cash Negotiate now. If you have uh, offices, if you have uh, retail stores, uh, go back to your landlords and renegotiate your rentals. Because believe me, the next year also is going to be a very slow year. So this is the time to go back and re renegotiate those rentals and see if you get some relief. A good example and uh, sort of it sort of uh, connects with the progressive companies that I talked about, the pragmatic companies about offensive and defensive strategies. When I was leading an organization way back and the financial crisis had hit, what did I do? First thing I did was I renegotiated every rental contract that I had. And believe me, the mall management really gave and were ready to talk about reducing rentals. Not only did I do that, we, we were looking for more spaces and the right spaces for our retail stores. And it is during that financial crisis, I actually added 50% more stores at the right locations. And in one year, we actually came out far, far bet better and way ahead of what our business plans were. So you have to look at and look at how you're going to renegotiate your, your 
primary expenses that you would have. What about marketing and selling? My advice, keep those expenses. I'll talk a little bit more about marketing and selling expenses elsewhere too. So I'm not spend, uh, spending too much time talking about it. But believe me, you'll have to continue to market your uh, products and services. You have to continue to sell. That is something that you cannot stop. You can always put it as that. So I talked about the fact that cash flow is cash is king. And this quote really says it all. Revenue is vanity, profit is vanity, but cash truly is king. And in these hard times, it is your cash flow that really needs to matter. Every entrepreneur knows it. Those of you who have been running your businesses know you need to have cash in hand, especially in these slowdowns. Great example, and again, you will say that, hey, this gentleman is going back to the financial crisis of 2008. But again, a great example, Ford Motor Company, at the time of financial crisis, already had a 20 billion credit line they were not utilizing it, but because the credit line was available to them, they were able to survive it. Otherwise, God knows today whether Ford existed as a company or not. It was only because they had the cash available then through a credit line from the banks that they were able to survive the crisis. Recover your debts. Many times that becomes an issue. So if you have to employ somebody from your finance team, just focusing on recovering your debt, do it now. Uh, offer your A customers cash upfront discounts. Now when you say A customers, in my uh, thinking, I split my customers as A, B, C, and D. A customers are my top, top customers who give me a large amount of business, possibly are repeat customers and don't have payment issues. They pay on time, agree to dates, everything else happens. B are my basic customers, customers who are there and do, do decent business with me. C are customers, what I say, can't deal with. And those are customers Either you need to move them to B or let go of them. And D are customers that are dead. So you really need to focus in these hard times on A and B customers and get your business going. Offer your A customers cash upfront discount so that they pay in time and keep your cash flow going. It's keep important suppliers and partners. Pay your important suppliers on time as per agreed to terms. And again, you'll say, hey, what, what is this gentleman saying? But believe me, it is these suppliers who are going to help you in this time of crisis to ensure that your supply chain is absolutely okay on the back end. If you're paying on time, you can actually help reduce your inventory costs by keeping lower amounts of inventory these suppliers will deliver on time and therefore if you keep even smaller amounts of inventory you will be able to re release a lot of cash look at those options government programs the federal government the government of india rbi just recently announced a slew of uh, programs even if you have the financial muscle to get past the slowdown, my advice is to look at these programs and take them with both the hands. Many times, uh, if you have credit limits, go back to your bank and renegotiate the interest rates 
ensure that the bank is ready to continue to uh, uh, sort of honor the limits that they have given you. Look at, is there a possibility of getting lower interest rates from other banks? So really look at yourself where you can get cash, cash availability at a lower cost. And that is truly uh, extremely important in these times to get your business out of this uh, slowdown. Reduce your capital expense. You have capital expense programs right now running. See if you can negotiate with the suppliers, delay the payments, or start paying them rental for the capital equipment that you have purchased, which sort of a wet lease, if I may, which then gets merged once things get on and goes towards the payment of the actual, uh, as a capital payment later on. So look at all the options that are available because those are the uh, things that are going to help you. And finally, sell your goods. Sales gets you the maximum capital. Folks, just a quick reminder, I hope you're taking time to write the questions that are coming to your mind because we will have time to go over your questions uh, once I end my conversation. So the next thing what you need to do, and it's an interesting uh, slide header, right? Sales with compassion. What do I mean by that? We need to change our tone of sales is something that keeps the business going. Cutting costs will get you some, but it will not get you there. However, in these tough times, we really need to change our tone of our selling. Three months back, four months back, when everything was hunky-dory, business was on the up. You could have taken a hard sell approach, take it or leave it in front of your customers, show some arrogance in your selling. But opting for the hard sell approach right now is not befitting in these current times. Customers, are looking for empathy. Customers are looking for compassion. And they are equally disturbed as you are, both emotionally and mentally. A hard sell will not get you. So try and be empathetic, try and be compassionate, and have a serious customer focus. Because these are the times that the customers need, need you the most. Despite their compassion, despite the empathy, it is still selling. And believe me, let no one tell you, hey, why are you continuing to sell? Believe me, you are not selling for the sake of selling, but right now, Sales has a very different purpose. And that purpose is to save your business. It's not about meeting your top line. It's about saving your business right now. This single most purpose right now for sales is how can I save your business? And of course, the connect that you have with your customers, the relationships that you build really matter, really, really matter. So take care of people now, take care of your customers now. And believe me, they'll take care of your. It is truly critical 
create a perception with your customers. Here is a company that under promises and over delivers. That is where the shift has to come in your mind and in everything that you execute. The next element that I'm going to talk about, the next step, is probably a very important piece of this conversation. People. I believe, this is my personal belief, and I've stood by it in my entire career, that the people, your people, are your biggest assets. And what are they doing right now? Your employees are scared. They're scared of what lies ahead. They don't know what is going to happen once the lockdown gets lifted. They are fearful of losing their jobs. They are worried about the virus. They are worried about themselves and their families. And they're worried about what is going to happen because they can't see the future. They can't predict the future that they know that their prediction will hold true. In short, they're worried about everything that is happening around them. What is it that you need to do? You need to lead and change the mindset. Fear is hopeless. The daily huddle and the team catch up, those are things that gets your employee. Your celebration of every small win helps them get out of this mindset of fear and the fact that there is some wins that have happened and we are moving forward. It's crucial for you to think and get your employees to focus on the goal that you have set for them. If you look at the quote up in the slide, start with good people, lay out the rules, communicate with your employees, motivate them and reward them. And if you do all those things, believe me, your employees will take care of your business. Great man, Lee Iacocca, uh, great leader at Ford and subsequently at Chrysler Auto. Uh, amazing person, person in terms of his business uh, sense that he had in leading those companies. Uh, so the other element that you need to do from your employees is set new standards. Set new standards in terms of delivering on their goals while working from home, while being virtual, while being in an environment which right now is very fearful People don't know what, where the business is going to be, economy is sliding. All those things you still need to set new standards. That is what gets them to focus where they need to focus. And you need to do it with a lot of positivity and a lot of passion and energy for what you stand for and for what the business stands for. It's crucial and important at this stage to help your employees understand the purpose of your business because that is what would drive your employees forward and get all the fear that is surrounding them. It's an interesting uh, uh, comment that I am making here. So you have employees who are managing costs, and then you have the sales side, which is managing your profits, basically the cost centers and the profit centers. And you have to think how you're going to have these cost center employees move into profit center roles. Because right now you need all hands on deck to get your sales engine going and continue to grow. A good example, an accounts assistant probably uh, taking charge of all the debtors 
and try and recover them. A supply chain guy probably working with your sales team members to do the back end work for him or her while the sales team actually gets more time in front of the customers. Think of those aspects. Think how these profit center, cost center employees can move into profit center roles and get things moving. Train and retrain. This is the time a lot of people, a lot of people are acquiring new skills. And that is what is required. You need to train or retrain any of your employee. This is the time to get him or her Keep as many employees as you can. And I have a very, uh, very nice story about this. Uh, so there's a company in the US, uh, in San Luis, called Barry Wehmiller. So Barry Wehmiller is an engineering services, engineering products company, and also an IT services company. Large company, about 7,000 employees. And in the financial crisis, because things went spiraling down, uh, Barry's uh, board met, and then they called the chief executive officer saying, Mr. CEO, please come. We need to discuss how we're going to survive this crisis. In the process, the board asked the CEO that we need a cost reduction of $10 million from your employees, which means you need to let go of your employees and save $10 million for us. The CEO was in a quandary because he didn't want to do that. He had a different approach to the whole process. So he told, he promised the board, he said, Mr. Board members, uh, you need a 10 million saving. I assure you that I'll get you the 10 million saving end of the year. He came out of that board meeting, went back to the his troops, his uh, employees, and uh, talked to them. And his message was very simple. Folks, either all of us can suffer a little or some of you can suffer a lot. I believe all of us should suffer a little and get past this crisis. And together with his team, they put a program where each employee in the organization took a four weeks unpaid holiday. End of the year, the CEO went, up, went back to the board with a $20 million saving and a team that was extremely high on morale and extremely gung-ho of, of being in it together. So the reason why I'm saying and gave this example is Believe me, keep as many employees as you can. Look at ways and means how you can plan it. Uh, you're already seeing announcements by various companies in India where the chief executive officers, uh, owners have said, okay, I'm not going to take salary for one year and all that stuff. Uh, we are going to cut salaries at higher, uh, of higher and uh, high paid employees. A lot of stuff is happening. And all that is because in the end, once this crisis gets over, you need these people back, right? So you need to look at what you need to do best in these circumstances. Having said all that, and I'm giving, I gave you a great example, there is a possibility of two things. One, there were underperforming employees that you were already planning to get rid of. This is the time to do it. Or the second possibility is that you believe as, as owner of the business, Mr. Entrepreneur, that despite all the changes and the salary cuts, I would still need to let go of employees because my business cannot take it. To that end, I have only one advice. Whatever attrition you're planning, do it only at one go. 
which means your scenario planning has to be such that your attrition has to account for the worst case possibility. Do not think that, okay, hey, I let me let go of three employees now. And if things don't go as per my plan, then three months or four months down the road, I will let go of five more employees. Because if that happens, when you're letting go of three employees, you will not be truthful to your remaining team whether you have any other plans for attrition. So if you do it at one go, you'll be transparent and open that this is the only change we are looking at. And now rest of us, let us get together and get this business ramped back up. So think about those things as we go, as you go forward in your business planning. Mindset. And believe me, bringing, building a strong mindset, right? Is the need of the hour. It, positivity has to come through and do whatever it takes to maintain it. Some people exercise to get sanity back. Others do yoga or med meditation. Do whatever it takes. But keep your solution. Having a daily ritual would help you. Have a day's plan ready. This is what I'm going to do. First half, typically, I am addressing these things. Second half, this is what I'm going to do. This is my most productive time of the day when I'm active, when my mind is fresh, this is the time that I'm going to think forward, come out with plans, what are we going to do? This is the time that I'll strategize with my senior team, see what we're going to do for the next week, week after, two weeks, three weeks, six weeks later. Have that plan. Continue to learn and grow. Part of attending this uh, webinar, uh, webinar, I'm sure you've got some idea. How are you going to take your business forward? And this is part of learning and growing, right? This is, crisis is presenting an opportunity to you. And believe me, if you will look at possible opportunities that can exist when this crisis brings you, that is where your win is. That is the only way you can win. Finding small wins each day. Believe me, it is not about make getting a hundred percent win. It's about getting a one percent win hundred times, and you will get there. This is an interesting uh, in today's connected world. Sometimes you are buried under the news avalanche. The WhatsApp keeps burying you under stuff that is lost in getting you back to work. While you're working, keep away from WhatsApp, Facebook, other social media platforms that are giving you a whole bunch of negativity. Have a fixed time in the day when you watch and consume real news, not what gets floated around. That will keep your sanity and keep you thinking forward rather than being buried. Oh, this has happened. This is what is this report saying. This is what somebody else is saying. This is what this researcher is saying. Get away from all of that. It's important that you focus on your work and hand rather than getting buried under the WhatsApp avalanche. I promised you I'll talk a little bit about money. And the fact that why we should not stop investing in marketing and selling ourselves. The only thing you need to do in your marketing spend and marketing plan is the message. Just as your sales tone has to be different, your marketing message has to be different cannot be the same. It has to be compassionate. 
and more importantly, has to bring out the purpose of your organization. People today, in the fact that they are confused when they are uh, emotionally and mentally disturbed, they love to connect with the purpose. They do not connect with what the users of the products are. They do not connect what benefits your products are offering them. They need to understand that the purpose of your business is for the greater good of the community. And that is where your marketing mes message has to come through. Believe me, that is the change that you need to bring. If you think what advertisements, what messages you had, which you were running probably uh, three months, four months back, you can just continue with that. Believe me, those are not going to work. Of course, in your messaging, you have to urge your customers to take action. Now, now. Your marketing has to be virtual and virtual. What's the advantage of virtual? The bigger advantage is that most of it is measured. And with measured marketing, you can actually measure Also need to negotiate your marketing contracts and the reason why you need to negotiate it because this is the time to negotiate remember we talked about cutbacks and we met every cost outlay so marketing is a cost outlay that you need to renegotiate back go back and see if you can get more marketing or the same rupee that you were spending earlier look at that and the fact that you're measuring your marketing, you will know your numbers far better than before. The last point that I have is really what is it that you need to do now for the next 90 days? Because it is the next 90 days that are crucial. If you are able to survive it with positivity, with a positive mind, Remember, we talked about communication, we talked about the positive mindset that we need to bring. We talked about the business side of things, how we're going to look at every cost outlay, how we're going to change, how we're going to drive our sales and marketing for. We need to look at then put a plan together and see what you're going to do in the next 90 days to get out of this slowdown, get out of this pandemic. Put together a plan based on what you've thought through. What changes you're going to make to your product? What will you market and what will you sell? How will you deliver and charge your customers? Right? Especially, you know, uh, when you are you are actually a brick and mortar store and you now are trying to put your products online. What changes do you need to make? To Think about all those things. Then, of course, the main objective being you're going to survive first and thrive later. The 90 day program and your thinking is all about what are you going to survive. Work with your coach if you have. If you don't have a mentor, of course, believe me, having a mentor, having a coach really makes it. Ah, step 12 in an 11 step program. But this step 12, I just wanted to put across to you because these are all common sense. And I'm sure you would have all thought about it. Right? Over deliver and customer service. In these tough times, customers are looking at. Every business is trying to over deliver. Look at small wins that you can get. A small thank you email to the customer really becomes such an important thing for you and for your customer. Right? Remember, virtually, 
if you smile your customer doesn't know don't know so how would you ensure that your customer knows that you're happy with his business and you're thankful to him for the business that he's given you think about those put your people first they are your biggest Think out of the box. It's important to think, and no idea is a bad idea. Reach out to your teams. Sometimes they have great ideas, and that will help you think and come out of this situation. Obviously, wash your hands as much as you can. Keep clean. And finally, provide a sanitizer and stay safe. It's important. So as I finish up, uh, I wanted to offer you a small gift for all the time that you've invested today with me. I'm offering you a free business health check. Copy and follow the following link and obviously It'll take you to the Action Coach uh, India site where you can uh, go through this business health check. Then we will come back to you. With so those of you who want to do now, uh, feel free to do, do so. Those of you who want to do it later, send us an email and we will send you the link. We'll be happy to send you the link. Right? Think about what five ideas that you took out of the and you need to take action. Believe me, that is going to help you. If you think you're going to do it tomorrow or day after, research shows that after 10% of what So think about what action you're going to take now. And lastly, as action coach, I talked about that your 2021 plans have gone for a toss with this pandemic coming in, coming in and all your growth plans, all your hiring plans, everything is on the shelf right now. So at Action Coach, we offer a program called Growth Club where we help businesses put their 12 month program and then break it down to a 90 day quarterly plan to ensure that they're able to put it all together given the new situation. And what I'm offering you today is join me for a growth club at discounted rates. Uh, if you're interested, please send an email and we will come back to you dates and times. Lastly, I'll appeal to all of you, donate whatever you can to the PM Cares Fund. The name With that, uh, what I will do is I'll hand you back to Sonali and together with Sonali and me, we will go over the questions. Thank you so much, so, so much for patiently listening to me today. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful insights. And uh, I'm really sorry to everyone for having some issues with the audio. Uh, to everyone asking, yes, the recording will be available. We'll be posting it on all our social media platforms for you to have a look. So please make sure you follow us there. And also we will share the notes of uh, the complete webinar in an email afterwards. So thank you so much. And once again, thank you so much, yeah. sir. And so, yeah, we'll start with the Q&A session now. I'll just take up uh, all the questions one by one. Um, Right, so uh, someone says, are we going to have continuity on this subject and program in future so that we can collaborate our thoughts to work on a feasible model to overcome the price, uh, the crisis? Your thoughts? So the question is put by uh, Eka Pillai, right? Yes, sir. right. Yeah, so Mr. Pillai, absolutely. Uh, we would love to see and look at your, uh, uh, your thoughts. 
and definitely can work to a feasible model to look at how we can help entrepreneurs. Yeah. Uh, next question is by Mr. Amit Madhav. He says, how we should plan virtually for manufacturing industry where blue collar uneducated staff is there? Yeah. So manufacturing industry, unfortunately, cannot work virtually, especially for blue collar staff, which needs to go and come into manufacturing lines to produce products. Right. So uh, absolutely. Uh, that is where I think the only thing that you can offer to these this uh, staff possibly and that is if they're uh, if they're online and if they have they can have access to broadband at home is try and see if you can train and retrain them that's a good possibility you can look at offering customer uh, service classes to them you can look at uh, how you can improve quality and look at how uh, you can improve uh, production qualities and see if you have trainings available for those. That is the stuff that I would say you need to focus on right now while they are hunkered down at home. Right. Uh, the next question is by Monica Segal. Uh, she says, agree with the strategy of offensiveness with defensiveness. So there's going to be some retrenchment for survival of others. How does one deal with this socially and morally, especially when the virus is an act of God? Very good question, uh, Ms. Segal. Uh, right now, even our governments are advising that please do not let go of any jobs because these are tough times. And most, as I mentioned in my conversation too, your employees are your biggest asset and try and keep as many as you can. And if at all you have to let go, then I would say there are various means and options that the government right now is offering your employees. One is a scheme of PF withdrawal so that basically your employees will be able to get some cash at home by withdrawing the PF. BPF rules have just been relaxed by the government of India to ensure that they can get up to three months salary and withdraw it from the problem fund. So look at all those options in helping your employees weather this storm. So uh, yes, socially, absolutely my advice and we should follow the government norm here and the government's advice and uh, uh, guideline that uh, if we can hold on to our employees in these tough times, at least for three more months, it'll be great. Um, next question is by Mr. Vibhur Khanna. He says, usually when working with large teams on virtual platforms, some folks don't quite often come forward with their challenges or constraints and even experiences. Any techniques to help them open up more often? Great question, Mr. Khanna. Uh, so, yes. And that's where, uh, remember a point that I touched upon when you're having meetings, you need to have a uh, hundred percent participation, which means that everybody gets time to contribute. And as a leader of that meeting, if you are uh, leading a team, it is it, it solely rests on you to draw people out and possibly understand more in what they're trying to say or what they're not trying to say. That is one. The other is connecting with your employees one-on-one, -on -one, probably in these uh, tough times, at least once a day, to understand what are the challenges, constraints that they are facing. And uh, then bringing it up in a larger gathering. So if, you, if an employee has raised that issue one-on-one -on -one with you, you can open it up in the next employee meeting that you have so that everybody comes on the same page on those issues. I trust uh, this helps answer your question. Right. Next question is by Ms. Dolly Roy. She says, as we need to keep sales target low, one has to devise some cutting measures. I agree one needs to have a pragmatic approach, but sometimes it's difficult to make employees understand how to address the same. Yeah. Uh, and that is where uh, uh, Ms. Roy 
the issue comes of helping employees your vision, helping your uh, employees understand the vision of the organization, the mission, where are you headed, why are you headed, and what is the larger picture. And then working with the employees together, you look at the example of the Barry Wemmeler. The CEO went back and talked to the employees in a very open, transparent fashion where he said, look, I've been instructed by my board to cut $10 million out of my salary budget. How am I going to do it? So if you are transparent, open about the business and say, hey, if we have to survive and all of, our, all of us are in together, these are the cost-cutting measures that we are taking. Now, let us all look at it together and see what we can do. And many times in these hard times, taking ideas from them, the employee itself, gives you a far greater buy-in when the ideas are coming from them. So look at those possibilities during your employee conversations, and I'm sure you'll get by. Right. The next question uh, says, I'm a small business finance company that gives out loans for automobiles. I'm at a stage now where my EMIs are going to get delayed. I cannot reduce my staff, uh, staff strength as they are long-term employees and I have an obligation to take care of them, especially during times like these. What are the three main things I should focus on to handle this situation? Well, uh, the EMI is actually, uh, Mr. Alagapan, uh, the EMI is actually give me uh, the first answer, which is, Go back to your bank. The RBI has recently announced that all EMIs that were due for March, April, and May, you can defer. So the first thing you need to do is go back to your bank and renegotiate and look at deferring those EMIs. As soon as you get that three months breather, sure, uh, that is going to come at a cost because you are deferring your EMIs, but you'll continue to pay higher interest on the deferment. But having said that, given the fact that you want to save your staff, it, I believe paying that small interest would be better to save your staff and carry on. So if you're able to get a three month breather, then you'll be able to continue with your staff and in three months, put together a 90 day plan. How are you going to go forward? Uh, the next question by Mr. Shah is similar to the one asked by Mr. Amit previously uh, about uh, dealing with the virtual environment in a manufacturing company. So I think yeah. we'll skip that yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next question is by Mr. Mahendra. He says, how badly and for how long do you think the hospitality industry will be affected, especially if your business is focused on B2B? Well, it's, it's a very open question. And I don't know whether I am, I have the uh, expertise enough to tell you that the hospitality industry is impacted by four weeks, six weeks, six months, one year. I don't know what is going to happen with the hospitality industry. And it all stems from the fact that it is human lives that we are looking at. And if any human being feels that his life gets threatened by going and staying in a hotel, which the room possibly is not sanitized, clean, or whatever you may call it, the human being will not travel or go to a hotel to stay. So you're dealing with human emotions here uh, and human fear. So I would say I would not care to attempt how long the hospitality industry would be impacted. My, my simple uh, thought here would be if you're dealing only with hospitality industry, look at how you can pivot your business and look at new target customers. Uh, the next question is by Mr. Rohit. He says, is this the right time to invest in other businesses? Maybe I might end up with a good deal. Mr. Warrior, uh, it is indeed a good time, but you need to look at both. As I said, 
and I gave a great example about uh, Hewlett Packard. So you have to look at uh, both aggressive and uh, defensive strategies. So what you're trying to say of investing in a new business, which is available to you possibly at a lower valuation is a very aggressive strategy, but at the same time, you need to ensure, and the defensive strategy would be A, whether you're cutting costs and B, whether your cash flow is covered. So those are things that I would uh, urge you to watch out for. Uh, the next question is by Hiren Patel. Uh, any suggestions for travel agency and tour operator for the next six months? How do we manage this crisis? Mr. Patel, uh, at the outset, uh, I would not want to be in your position because uh, obviously travel agency and tour operators for the next six months, it's going to be a tough, tough uh, call. The only thing that I can suggest to you is if you work with large B2B businesses, see if you can offer cash discounts on your groups that you are selling six months later or eight months later. Uh, that is the only option that I can think of immediately uh, as to how you can try and survive. The next question is by Mr. Tony Fernandez. Uh, he says, being in the logistics industry, I want to know how to give discount for payments where the margins are just five to 7% and payments don't come before 30, 45 or 60 days. Can you put some light on this on whether to give discounts? Thank you for all your inputs. Uh, I, uh, Mr. Fernandez, I agree with you. Uh, logistics, of course, margins are very, very thin and uh, payments obviously agreed to terms are 30, 45 and 60 days. And therefore uh, you are challenged. So a good example for a logistics company uh, that comes to my mind is, so you also sell on volume, right? Uh, volume weight. So what if instead of offering a discount, you offer a scale, you offer a far wider scale. So instead of doing zero to 50 kilos, you can say, okay, zero to hundred kilos, this is the rate. And looking at, those options rather than looking at options where you give a cash discount. So what you're offering to your customers is a far more possibly accommodation than their rates in terms of volume weight, rather than looking at how uh, you can give clear discounts because your margins are really thin. The next question is by Mr. Bohra. He says, I work for a BPO and the management is finding work from home as a new business model. However, BPO is all about people management and leads management. What's your take on work from home as a business model? Does it help us recruit retired people, housewives, et cetera, and expand our team? What is one major thing to keep in mind with such a business model? Yes, uh, Mr. Vora, I definitely understand the BPO business. Uh, I know somebody very close who works in this business and right now is working out of home. So uh, there are issues and there are challenges. And uh, what is required specifically in this A is a very strong backend on your software that there are no leaks, especially customer information because you're dealing with, at most times you're dealing with, uh, I would say personal information, and you need to ensure that uh, your systems are pretty strong to ensure that, uh, you know, you have all the security that is available, number one. Uh, work from home at business model. I have found people from BPOs working from home comfortably. Uh, so that's not a problem. Uh, hiring retired people is a brilliant idea. Hiring housewives is a brilliant idea. And a lot of housewives and retired people are ready to do, uh, you know, uh, work from home. So given the virtual, that the fact that virtual is the new normal, I think you're on the right track. Uh, so we're left with the last five questions now. Uh, Mr. And we are out of time also. We are out of, time. out of time. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so let's do the, let's possibly take one or two more and then we call it off. Okay, sure.
Um, Mr. Kaushal says, how can we ensure that we don't miss on government programs offered? Is there any consolidated list that is available? Uh, Mr. Garg, definitely. Uh, there is a consolidated lift, list and we will get that list to you. Absolutely. Uh, the next question, I'll just combine the two questions. It's about the effect of uh, on the e-commerce market and also on the real estate industry. So I will take the e-commerce one very quickly. Uh, of course, uh, right now, if you're in the e-commerce business, especially healthcare, pharma, and e-commerce, uh, those are businesses that will fly. Uh, if you are in the hospitality industry, uh, in aviation industry, uh, you are in a hard place. So the e-commerce industry absolutely is going to, to fly now. Right. And what about uh, real estate and advertising? Both, because those were the two questions that were remaining. So, so real estate uh, and advertising, uh, I think real estate was picking up slowly. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, with the new slew of norms that uh, RBI recently announced, and I'm hoping that the government will come up with more norms with respect to real estate. There is industry pressure coming uh, from a lot of sides with on the government to look at possibly looking at uh, further easing of norms for the real estate. My sense is real estate should come out better in the next six to eight months or midterm. Uh, Advertising. advertising if you are in the if you are in the uh, digital marketing space digital advertising space uh, you have a great business and great future ahead that's great thank you so much for being so patient sir and for answering all of uh, no, thank you very much everybody and thank you sonali for being a wonderful moderator again i'd like to thank the action coach india team for uh, all the time and putting this together. Thank you, Bizex. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we will share a follow-up email with everyone with all the details about the webinar, all the notes, and also the link to uh, the recording of the webinar. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.